بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise and thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his servant and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As to what follows my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh and uh, last week, alhamdulillah, we had the opportunity and the chance to explain the beginning of Surah Al-Inshiqaq. And we ended off with Qawlihi uh, Ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal insanu innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaqeeh. That the insan, the human, every human, whether you're a believer or you're a disbeliever, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to everyone in this ayah. You will be in labor, in hardship, all your life. And this hardship in your life eventually is going to lead to where? Ila Rabbik. It's going to lead you to your Lord. And at the end when you meet Him, there is going to be the meeting and the judgment before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what happens when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What happens there and then at the judgment before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The only possible outcome you can have after the meeting and after the judgment, two. Only two possible outcomes, two results. Either your book in your left or your book in your right. And so inshallah ta'ala, this is our lesson today and this is the second passage of the surah. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, as for the one who had been given his book in his right hand. Now Allah said, Utiya kitabahu. Utiya is a past tense verb, as opposed to it being a present tense, which would have been Yu'ta kitabahu biyaminihi. And that would have given us the translation of, as for the one who will be given the book. But Allah didn't use a present tense, He used a past tense. As for the one who had been given his book, and, and we know this event hasn't happened yet. It will happen in the future. But he used a past tense. You have got to understand that in classical Arabic, the past and the present tense isn't how we think of past and present in English. The past tense in the Arabic language is a means by which you can deliver certainty. You can deliver certainty. And just like we explained in the beginning of the surah, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ انشقت, Allah Azza wa Jal referred to the splitting of the moon, uh, sorry, to the splitting of the earth and the end of times with a past tense verb. And that gave us, it implied certainty. In other words, it's going to happen. It will happen. And so the past is used as a means to deliver certainty of something. So Allah Azza wa Jal is saying here, so for the one, who surely and certainly who had been given his book in his right hand. We're going to continue. But first, before we continue, what book is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about? You see the connection between this surah and the surah before. In Surah al mutaffifin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made mention of a book. That the book of the righteous will be in Illiyin, in the highest places. And so the book, and so this is the book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. Now another question to be answered, what's the book for anyway? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything, what's the book for? What's the purpose of a book? You see, because the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you and I, when we know that our deeds are recorded in a book and they're inscribed, they're stitched in the book, you cannot erase them, you cannot wipe them out. Then, and then we know it's going to be displayed before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right before our eyes. When we know this, then it becomes, you become sort of scared to commit a sin. Or at least you start thinking twice. Should I do this? Should I not do it? It's going to be inscribed, recorded. Whether you made tawbah from it or not, it's going to be written. It's there. And so the first group of people are people that will be given their book 
in their right hand. Now let's just look at a couple of things in the first half of this ayah. First of all, this is not the only place in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the book being handed in the right hand. We find a mention of this in Surah al haqqa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَيَقُولُ هَا أُمُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَهِ The one who will be given his book with his right hand, he will continually say, O oh people, come here and read my book. So he gets the book in his right hand, and it's like a graduation certificate. You know, when you get a graduation certificate, you don't just want to put it in the shelf. What do you want to do with the certificate that you get? You want to frame it, you want to hang it up on the wall, just like most businesses and most clinics, you find even doctors, the certificates and the qualifications they have, they don't just put it down in the drawer, in the shelf, in the filing cabinet. It's out, it's framed, and it's hung on the wall. Why do people do this? So they can show it to other people, he's happy. It's an expression of his happiness. He wants other people to look at his qualification. So you get your book in the right hand on the day of judgment, and you've got your certificate basically to paradise, that's your key. And you want to show it to the rest of the world. You want it to show it to everyone. So this person, he goes around and he says, Come along, boy, come read my book. And by the way, nobody cares anyway, you know? No one cares. Everyone is by himself, but he can't hold himself. There's so much fun, there's so much joy within him. He starts saying out continuously, يقول, and يقول is a present tense, it implies continual. You know, it will keep saying, come read my book, come see my book, hey, look at this, look what I got in here. I passed and he's just running around, he's happy. And then he says, and he says with nervousness, he says, إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقٍ حِسَابِيَ I was sure, I was certain that I was going to come in contact with my accountability. And I was so worried. You know, I was sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to show me my book and it's going to have everything in it. And I was worried, I was worried about this. And then Allah Azza wa says, فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةِ الرَّاضِيَةِ You know, he'll be put in, in, in the paradise. And let's go back to the ayah that's in Surah Al-Inshiqaq. Another thing we're supposed to note in this ayah, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ We need to focus on the word بِيَمِينِهِ Now, yameen is the right hand. And also, it was used in the Arab, in the Arab times, they used to use the word yameen as a symbol of happiness. And it's an expression of an agreement. You know, back then you used to shake hands with someone. That means it's an agreement. It's a done deal. That's it. It's done. And you don't have to sign any papers or stamp a paper or go to a lawyer or something. That wasn't part of the culture. What was part of the culture many years ago is that you shake hands and that's the agreement. You know? So you go to someone, you say, well, what are you doing? Where's the money? We shook hands on it. But now that doesn't exist because most of our agreements happen through email or SMS or on the phone and so on. But before that's how it was. So the handshake was an agreement, the yameen. The right hand was an expression of an agreement. So Allah Azza wa when He says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ Meaning the person that receives his book, the book in his right hand, firstly, he's happy. And secondly, once you receive it with your right, it's an agreement that you'll end up in paradise. That's the agreement that Allah Azza wa has put in these ayat. فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةِ الرَّاضِيَةِ And the right hand, it's also considered as honor. You used to have the meaning and a symbol of honor. And so now you're honored on the day of judgment when you receive the book in your right hand and you'll be honored, you're able to read the book and you'll enter paradise with honor. So now you get the book with your right hand. You received it with your right hand. What happens now? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا it is an incredible ayah. It has so much mercy in it and so much dimensions. We need to we need to sit a bit of time on this ayah so we can explain and understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
then for the one who will be given or who had been given his book in his right hand, he will be accounted, he will be audited, he will be judged. Yuhasabu. And Yuhasab, it means to be accounted for every single thing you did. No matter how small or how big it was, no matter whether it's good a good thing or a bad thing, you'll be accounted. How will you be accounted? Those that receive with their right hand, the accounting will be hisab and yasira. We're going to explain hisab and yasira. An easy accounting. An easy accounting, an easy reckoning. And before we explain this, how it happens, this ayah, it helps us understand something in the previous surah. You know, in the previous surah we read, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ Surely the righteous will be in continuous bliss, in continuous blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is the first blessing that the people of paradise receive before they get into the paradise, before they see the reward in paradise? The first na'im they experience on that day is that they receive the book in their right hand and they'll be full of joy. And the second bliss they will be receiving, the second na'im before the paradise, is that their accounting, their judgment will be easy. And then, something we failed to mention last time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَعْرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ نَضْرَةً نَعِيم Allah Azza wa is speaking to His Messenger in this ayah. He's saying, you, Ya Rasulullah, will recognize in their faces a glow, a shine. Now where does this glow, where does this shine come from? That's on the face of the believers. They got their book in their right hand. So once they get the book in their right hand, their face, their face lit up, it lights up. And before, before that you're not sure. And as soon as you get the book in the right hand, the face lights up. Allah Azza wa Jal tells His Messenger, تَعْرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ you will recognize on their face light. What does that mean? That means that the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam will be in their company. They'll be with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this adds one more to the na'im. So these are some of the na'im that the believers enjoy before entering paradise on the Day of Judgment. The first is that the book is in their right. The second is that Allah Azza wa Jal will give them an easy reckoning, an easy accountability. And the third is that they're with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, That the person, he is gathered with whoever he loves. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to gather us with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so, فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا uh, before we, we explain how Allah Azza wa Jal judges the believer easily, what does that mean? That He judges them easily. We need to understand the nervousness of people before us and especially the companions. You know, we think that we've done good in our life. Alhamdulillah, you know, we pray, we fast. We've done Umrah, we've done Hajj. Well, we pray maybe we miss a Salah here and there. But Alhamdulillah, we're good people, you know. We haven't killed anyone, we haven't committed major crimes. And you feel like you're doing alright. Now, look at how the Sahaba would think and the nervousness they had. And by the way, these people were guaranteed paradise. Listen to this. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he says, if one of my feet was inside the paradise and the other feet and the other foot was outside he said Ma amintu Allah. I will not feel safe from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan with me meaning I still don't know I'm not sure where Allah azza wa jalla what Allah has decided for me he's still nervous this is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu who's guaranteed the paradise He's saying, I don't know, if one foot is in, I'm still not sure where I'm going. Listen to what Umar radiallahu anhu says. He's incredible. Look at the nervousness he had. 
He says, Wallahi law nada munadin yawm al qiyamah. Anna kulla nasi fil jannati illa rajulun wahidun. La varantu annahu ibn al khattab. He said, if a caller was to call on the day of judgment, everyone is entering the paradise except one person. He said, I would have been convinced that that's me. That's the son of Khattab, yani Umar radiallahu anhu. This was their nervousness of people who were promised the paradise. And that's why they earned the paradise. They worked for it. They always had this fee that they're not part of the paradise. You know, we hear for self you have sabu hisab and yasira. Inshallah, we'll get this. You know, I'm gonna get this, the easy reckoning. So that's all right, I can take it easy now. Allah will give me something easy. But this is not the mentality of the people before us. This wasn't the mentality of the Sahaba. You know, because if you have a mentality, menta mentality like this, what happens? It leads you to laziness. We want hisab and yasira, you know, but you have to work for it. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the beginning, He mentions, إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدْحًا فَمُلَاقِينَ That came first. You're going to work hard and you're going to be in hardship. So might as well direct this hardship into the way where it's going to take you to paradise. There is no concept of uh, and that's for us and inshallah we'll make it. You make dua for this, but that's not the mentality you have. Otherwise it leads you to laziness. So you need to work hard. You're going to work hard. And we said is a verb that could refer to working hard in in a bad thing, or it could mean working hard in a good thing. Whatever you're doing, as long as you're working hard, that's kadh. So you direct your kadh to the good way. So Allah Azza wa can give you this. Now let's look at a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in where he explains this ayah. What is meant by hisab and yasira? An easy reckoning. What's meant by this? You know, one time Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she heard the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam making dua. And he said in his dua, Allahumma hasibni hisaban yasira. Oh Allah, when you take an audit, when you take an account of me, give me an easy account. Judge me easily. Subhanallah, this is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he's making this dua. For most of us, we don't even know where this dua exists in the Quran. We don't even know what it meant, Asl. This, you should then make a goal that before you leave, you memorize this dua. Allahumma hasib me hisaban yasira. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's making this dua for himself. So when Aisha radiallahu anha, she heard this dua, she said, Ya Rasulullah, man hisab al yasir? What is this easy reckoning? What's this easy accounting? What does that mean? So he, alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, an yanvura fi sayyatihi, that he subhanahu wa ta'ala will look into your sins and he will overlook them. He'll read them, but he'll pass, he'll pass by them. You know how you experience this in the world? Say for example, uh, you get pulled over for speeding and uh, the officer, he wants to see your license, he looks at you and he says to you, you know what, it's okay, God, don't worry. Don't do it again. Drive safely, go. That, that relief that you have, that sigh of relief you have, he let you go. Hisab and yasira. It is to hold onto a sin, read this sin before you, but then let you go. And so on the day of judgment, nobody thinks anything will slide. You don't have an expectation that something will slide. All your life you've been waiting for this, from ulaqi. And now you're going to think something's going to slide. No one has this mentality. So this is a tremendous mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the believers. They get their book in their right hand. And that doesn't mean that this book only has their good deeds. It also has the bad deeds. But Allah overlooks them. Don't worry. It's okay. Another hadith that describes exactly how it's overlooked. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إن الله يدني العبد يوم القيامة حتى يضع كنفه عليه فيقول فعلت كذا وكذا ويعد ويعد عليه ذنوبه ثم يقول سترتها عليك في الدنيا وأنا أغفرها لك اليوم. This حديث the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. It explains what this overlooking means. How does Allah overlook this sin? رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم says a believer will be brought close on the day of judgment to his Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will envelop him with his mercy. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him about his sins. Do you know this sin and that sin? And you remember when you committed this and you committed that? And so the believer will respond saying, yes, I remember, I did this, I did that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, I covered it up for you in this world. I covered it from the eyes of people. No one saw this. And today, I forgive it for you. And then, his record of good deeds will be handed to him in his right hand. That is Hisab and Yasira. That Allah Azza wa Jal looks at your bad deeds and he reads them to you. And you acknowledge your sins. And then Allah covers them. He says, I have covered for them for you in this life and I forgive them for you today. You're given the book again in your right and that's when you walk out. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَن نُوقِشَ الْحِسَابَ يَوْمَهَا عُذِّبْ أَوْ هَلَكْ Whoever is questioned, you know, نُوقِش means to be questioned, debated. Just about one thing. What were you doing outside at 3 p.m.? On the Saturday the 15th, what, what's this here? Just that question, what happens to this person? Allah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَقَدْ halak. That person will be doomed, he'll be destroyed. Just the moment when you get questioned for the deed, that's it, it's all over. So the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the believer is that he overlooks his sins. And he does not question him. He asks you, you did this, did you do this? But he doesn't question you. And the last hadith I share in this, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ أَحَدٌ يُحَاسَبُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِلَّا مُعَذَّبُ There is not a single person that is accounted on the day of judgment except that they are tortured. This is the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meaning the people who earn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's paradise directly, they will have to show their book. But their sins will be forgiven. And when their sins are forgiven, they handed their book back in their right and they run around. O oh people, come and read my book. And you, you can imagine the nervousness of this. You know, sometimes at school, you complete a quiz. And sort of this quiz is like on the spot. So the teacher marks it straight away in front of you, you know, there and then. And you're standing in front of the teacher. And as he's marking, you're anxious, you're, you're actually nervous, hoping that you pass without any mistake. And if there's anything wrong, you'll see he crosses it with, a, with a, the, red, the red pen. He's crossing. And as he's marking, that means he's just crossing and you can see this right in front of you. Now imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's going through your account. And there are mistakes in the books. There are sayyad, but there's no crosses. You know, it just goes, he skips it. And then your book is handed in your right without even being asked, why did you do this? Explain why you did this sayyad. Subhanallah, this is the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this surely is a na'im that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the believers. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us of people who receive their book in their right hand and to give us an easy accounting. So now, after this is done, you've got your book in your right and you've gone through al hisab al yasir Now, when you get great news, when you graduate from school or when you got an approval for some plan you want or when you won the, the bidding on a house, what's the first thing someone does? The first thing you do is you call. Who do you call? 
you call your family and you tell them, you know, you, you call your mother, you call your father, you call your wife, the kids. You know, we got it, alhamdulillah. I passed, alhamdulillah. You know, you know where I am now, I'm picking up the keys. It is just, it's normal. When you receive great news, the first people you call and give them glad tidings about the news are your family. And that's every time you have good news, you want to share it. And the first people you share it with is your family, those that you love the most. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, as soon as this person, as soon as this person's hisab is over and he's forgiven and he walks out with the book in his right and he's passed and he's heading towards the paradise, what happens next? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا He turns around, يَنْقَلِبْ And what does he, where does he go? إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ He runs straight away to his family. You know, in the previous surah, Surah Abasa, we read that every person will be running away from his family. You know, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ You're running away from your brother. وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ And your mother and your father. And no one cares for no one on that day. So how is this explained in tafsir? First of all, Ahlihi is not everyone in your family. Your family on the Day of Judgment are only those who believed with you. Your love on the Day of Judgment will be associated with those who believed with you. And you will not feel on that day love for those who didn't believe from amongst your family. You know, for example, Nuh alayhi salam, he feels pain for his son when his son is drowning. But on the day of judgment, that pain disappears. He has no feelings for his son anymore. Allah Azza wa Jal tells him, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَهْلِكِ Your son is not a part of your family anymore. And so he doesn't feel anything for him. Ibrahim alayhi salam, who was he concerned for? His father. He was concerned for his father Azar. But on the day of judgment, that concern, that worry he had for his father disappears. He doesn't feel it anymore. So the family on the day of judgment are the family members who believed in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alongside you. And so you return to your family masroora, masroora full of joy. And masroor is related to the word sir. Sir in the Arabic language is means a secret. So masroora is a kind of joy that you feel deep inside the heart. Just like a secret is kept deep inside the heart. Because you know happiness, sometimes it could be just on your face. You're pretending to be happy. But Masroorah, he goes back with that lasting joy to his family. It's deep inside, he cannot express it. But the thing to think of here, and to ponder over this in, in these ayat, imagine this person that just finished the hisab and walked away with his book in his right hand and his masroor is going back to his family. Imagine he has a higher level in paradise than his family members that he's walking to. What happens then? See, what the ayah is implying is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take people from the low levels of paradise to the upper levels of paradise to reunite them with their family. Suppose you're the one that received that book, but eventually you're in the lowest places of paradise. And there's another family member that's up above. How do you get to him? This ayah suggests that Allah Azza wa Jal will elevate you. So you can reunite with the family. So if you're up the top, you never come down through the elevator. You don't come down. Whoever's down the bottom from your family goes up to you. That's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and the best way to relate this to an example of worldly experience, you know, if, if, if you were to say you were to book a, a Umrah trip and your family lives in India and you live here and you want to book, uh, you're being generous, you want to book a trip for yourself and for your family. So you, you book yourself and you book a hotel, it's in Mecca. And obviously because you're doing it well, you're all right, you're a doctor, whatever it is, you book those executive suites, but right at the top, presidential suites, you're up the top. And your family, because they're coming from India or from Pakistan or so on, they're doing it a bit tough. 
they book, but they book, you know, down the bottom. Just really cheap rooms. Now, if you were to go to the hotel and you speak to the receptionist and you say, excuse me, I want to be with my family. What do you think they're going to do? What do you think they'll do? They're going to bring down the bottom your family from the bottom up to the top? Or they're going to tell you, look, we got a room for you down the bottom right next to them. That's what they'll do. They're going to bring you down. Because they can't possibly upgrade everyone to the top. They'll put you down. They'll offer you something down. Now, what does Allah Azza wa Jal do out of His mercy? You're up the top. Just one family member is up the top. And the rest of your family members are down the bottom. What does Allah Azza wa Jal do in this situation? He upgrades everyone. All those family members you had, they go up to you. You don't go down to see them. They come up to see you. And so if you have a family member in your family who does good Islamic work, you know, and he's always at the masjid, he's praying, and he's always doing good, then encourage these people instead of, you know, preventing them. You sometimes you have family, you tell his son, why are you going to study? What for? Why are you going overseas? You know, why are you praying five times in the masjid? Why are you giving dawah? Who needs dawah anyway? Everything's on YouTube. You know, this is people. That's how they go again with their family members. If you have a family member that you find he's willing and he loves this Islam and he's working hard towards this deen, then encourage him. Because he'll be your access to up if you're eventually going to end up down. And so, if you're in the low, row, low rank of the paradise, they'll help you come to the top. You'll have a connection to get to the higher rank just by encouraging a family member. So Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَيُنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا And the scholars say, إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ They give a, they give a bit more definition of أَهْلِهِ Firstly, they say, they are the family members as long as they believed in Allah Azza wa Jal. The second as well, they're also the group of believers. Your family are the believers as well. So the believers are like a family. Once we say, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا Allah." It connects us all. It makes us a family that's even stronger than blood relation. And the third of which is It can also refer to your ahl, to your family, and that includes al hur al ain the, 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 the woman that Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared for the believers in their paradise. So they're part of your family as well. And you'll be returning and going to them full of joy and happiness that you have passed. Then Allah Azza wa Jal he gives us the other outcome. This could be one situation. We ask Allah Azza wa to make us from them. The next one. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ Or in this ayah, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِهِ As for the one who had been given his book behind his back. In the previous surah, we found another mention of another book. Inna kitab al-fujjari la fi zijjin. That book we're talking about. The book of the rebellious, of the criminals, that's in sijjin. That book will be brought out. And it will be given to the criminals. And Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah al haqqa He says something different. He said, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ as for the one who had been given his book in his left hand. So you see the two, there's a, there's a difference. Surah Al-Inshiqaq is saying that the criminal will receive his book in behind his back. And in the other surah, he'll receive his book in his left hand. We need to understand this. And so we can understand this we need to put the two ayat together because that's how we understand the Qur'an together. Al-Qur'an yufassiru ba'duhu ba'da. The Qur'an explains itself. So some of the Sahaba and some of the Tabi'een, they mention this view. That when the criminal is brought forth on the Day of Judgment, their right hand is tied and it's chained around their neck. It's the right hand, it's around the neck like this. And their left hand is tied behind their back. And they're walking like this. And so they receive their book in their left hand, which is where? It's behind their back. So now we understand when Allah Azza wa Jal 
he says wara avahrih behind their back in one place and in his left hand in another place this is what it means his left hand is tied behind his back so when he takes his book his hand is already in his back and he receives it like this one up here and the other one then in the back and that's how he receives his book in surah al-haqqa their reaction was ya laytani lamuta kitabiya you know destruction has befallen unto me i wish i hadn't been given my book now the person that receives their book in the left can he even read this book think about it where is the book it's in his left behind his back he can't even read it but he knows it's bad he knows it's bad because it's in his left hand that's already enough as a sign and he knows it's bad but he can't and he won't read it he'll only scream out ya laytani lam uta kitabiya i wish i hadn't received my book now in this surah allah azza wa jalla tells us something else that the kafir will scream out he says fa sawfa yad'u thubura then soon he'll be crying thubura sawfa it means soon so it's not immediately after they get the book in their left hand behind their back it's soon after and what does that mean first he's given the book then he's made to walk and then they see jahannam they see sa'ira which is going to be mentioned in this surah a different name for jahannam they see that in front of them and he'll cry aloud and he'll scream thubura thubura ay halaka it means destruction death he sees it he says someone come kill me i don't want to live anymore someone just come and finish me off and allah azza wa jalla explains this further in surah al-furqan he says bal kadhabu bis sa'a they denied and they lied against the hour wa a'tadna liman kadhaba bis sa'ati sa'ira and we have prepared for those that deliberately lied against jahannam we have prepared for them sa'ira those that deliberately lied against the hour we prepared for them jahannam sa'ira idha ra'athum min makanin ba'id when it sees them and stares at them from a far distance sami'u laha taghayyuzan wa zafira they will hear a roar and anger and it breathes out breathes out you know like when someone that this breathing this is zafira they will listen and they will hear this from a far place min makanin ba'id then allah azza wa jalla says sami'u laha taghayyuzan wa zafira wa idha ulqu minha مكانا ضيقا مقرنين and when they are thrown in a tight place in it مقرنين and they're chained up دعوا هنالك ثبورا right there and then they will scream out destruction has befallen us someone come and kill me death and death then they'll describe death that's what they'll scream out and Allah عز وجل responds in that surah he says he says to them لا تدعوا اليوم ثبورا واحدا وادعوا ثبورا كثيرا you know don't cry out one death cry a lot of deaths you know death over death over death just keep saying someone kill me someone kill many many plenty لا تدعوا اليوم وادعوا ثبورا كثيرا that's the punishment of Allah عز وجل in which he gives to them you know in the previous surah what did the criminal do in the previous surah إن الذين أجرموا كانوا من الذين آمنوا يضحكون. That's all they do. Make fun of the believers. وإذا مروا بهم يتغامزون. And when they pass by the believers, they give them this this eye gesture, you know, insulting eye gesture. <coughs> Call them whatever terrorist or pedophile or slander and swear the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم or Allah عز وجل. And they found happiness in this. انقلبوا إلى أهلهم وإذا انقلبوا إلى أهلهم انقلبوا فكيهين. What's happening now in the day of judgment? The tone has changed. They're calling out now thubura. Someone come and kill me, get rid of me. Can't last this. Can't can't accept this. It's too much for him. Then Allah subhanahu and by the way, this is not too much for them, because Allah subhanahu wa taala told us in Surah Al-Nabi, جزاء وفاقا. This is justice. This is payback. 
equal reward. When Allah Azza wa Jal gives them all this and Jahannam and whatever it's described as, you know, and this feeling, I wish I can die, Allah hasn't oppressed them because Allah doesn't oppress anyone. He's given them exactly what they deserve. Nothing more, nothing less. You say, you need to think about this. And He's given, him, given them eternal, eternal Jahannam forever. One might say, man, the Kafir didn't uh, do kufr يعني, for so long. His kufr was what, 70 years? And then he died. How come he's in Jahannam forever? Well, the answer to that is that if he lived forever, he would have had kufr forever. So Allah Azza wa Jal gives him exactly what he deserves. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds to this. Not only sawfa yad'u thubura, at the beginning, once he receives the book and he's left behind his back, he says, someone come and kill me. Then Allah says, wa yasla sa'ira. Not only that, on top of this, yasla sa'ira. He shall enter and burn in sa'ir. Sa'ira is another name for the fire. Another name for the fire. And it hasn't passed yet. This is the first time Allah Azza wa Jal mentions it in uh, Juz'a Amr, right? And, uh, and what it means, Sa'ira is, is a towering blazing fire. A fire that becomes all of a sudden like a tower because of its intense heat. So Allah says, Yasla Sa'ira. He will burn inside of this towering, flaming, blazing fire. Yasla Sa'ira. Then Allah Azza wa Jal, He says about these people, he says to us something. He says, إِنَّهُ كَانَ فِي أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا These kind of people, no doubt about it, he used to be full of joy in his family, when he was among his family. He was full of joy, he was relaxed, he was happy. And Allah told us in the previous surah, Surah Al-Mutaffifin, وَإِذَا انْقَلَبُوا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ انْقَلَبُوا فَكِيهِمْ SubhanAllah, you see the, 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 the relation between this surah and the surah before it. They mention انقلبوا إلى أهلهم انقلبوا فكيهين and here Allah سبحانه وتعالى is saying إنه كان في أهله مسرورة again they had they were full of joy in this life making fun of the believers they didn't care about the future and so Ibn Kathir رحمه الله تعالى he said فرحا لا يفكر بالعواقب he was happy he never used to think of the consequences of his actions. So you know what Allah did to him? He took away from him the short happiness. In this world, it's referred to as a short happiness. And he replaced it with a long-lasting grief and sadness. With a lasting grief and sadness forever. SubhanAllah. This is what Allah Azza wa Jal gave them in return. إِنَّهُ ظَنَّ أَلَّا يَحُورُ Allah Azza wa Jal says, Verily, he thought that he would never come back. He was convinced, he assumed all along that he will never ever be brought back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّهُ ظَنَّ أَنْ لَنْ يَحُورُ You know, Yahur, the word Yahur, it comes from the word Hara, Hara, Yahur, Hawran, which means, you need to understand this word, it means to begin somewhere and go off and stroll, take a stroll somewhere else and then come back from where you began. So in other words, Allah Azza wa Jal is saying that these people are going to return to a place they initially began with. Well, what does that mean? This is referring to the covenant Allah Azza wa Jal took between mankind and Himself. You know in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَهِدْنَا Surah Al-A'raf, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us that Allah took from the back of Adam alayhi salam all mankind that are to live and that are to exist on the face of this earth. And he asked them a question. He, and we were all there as a soul. Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your master? Am I not your Lord? Shall I not be worshipped? And we all responded, Bala shaydna. Yes, we bear witness to this. That's where you started with Allah. Then you came to this world and you strolled around. You did what you did. Now you will return. Return where? Back to where you began. You began with Allah. You return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what the verb Yahur means. To begin and to return. 
to the exact same place. And that is the return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what the disbeliever assumes. He will never return. So in other words, he acknowledges that he was with Allah at the beginning, but he never expected to return. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes this passage and he says, Bala inna rabbahu kana bihi basira. Bala! What does that mean? It means, Bala yahuru ilayna wa yarji'u ilayna. See, you've got to read Bala by itself because Bala is connected to the ayah we just read. Innahu vanna alla yahur Bala. Bala means, but no, rather he will come back and return to us. So this bala is a response to the kafir, to the kafir's assumption of not returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innahu kana bihi basira. Inna rabbahu kana bihi basira. Verily his Lord, Allah azza wa jal, he was in full view of him. Basira is to have a full view of something. And Allah Azza wa Jal had a full view of each and every single one of us before we were created. You know what's interesting that comes around here is that in Surah Al Infidal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to us about who? About angels that record everything we do. If that didn't scare you enough, and that didn't bring you closer to Allah, and that didn't bring you to your senses, and say, you know what, I have angels on my left and right, and they're recording the good and bad I do. I should refrain and hold back and think twice if I'm going to do something haram. If that didn't scare you, this idea, then Surah Al-Inshiqaq, how does it scare you? Don't worry about the angels. Inna rabbahu kana bihi basira. The Lord, Allah Azza wa Jal had full view of you. If you thought that the angels, well, maybe something can go by and skip, then make sure you understand that Allah Azza wa Jal had full view of you before He created you, before the angels even knew about you. This is how Allah Azza wa Jal uh, concludes this passage. And this, this is Allah Azza wa Jal, meaning إِنَّهُ كَانَ بِهِ بَصِيرًا had an internal view of you and an external view of you. Knowing what happens deep inside and what you do obviously on the external, on the outside. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people of the paradise, people who receive their book in their right hand. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people of the Qur'an, people who benefit from the reminders of the Qur'an. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.